if you remember, we said that many object to Christianity because they claim that Christians have blind faith, whereas the scientist has objective facts. Or they claim that Christians have superstitious religion, whereas the scientist employs reason. Are such objections merited? Faith versus facts or religion versus reason? Let's define our terms and see. First, let's start with the term faith, which is synonymous with belief. And this is intelligent assent to understood propositions. What does this mean? A proposition is an idea or a plan that has been put forward for consideration or discussion. It is a declarative statement, and we weigh that declarative statement in our mind, and we determine whether or not it's true or false. If we think about the idea in our mind and we decide it's true, we assent to it, we agree. We have now exercised faith or belief. As an analogy, whenever we have state or federal elections, there are usually many propositions that are put on the ballot for state elections. Many states recently have been putting on their ballots whether or not marriage should be defined between a man and a woman. Now this is an idea that is being proposed. And so we take this idea and we weigh it in our mind, this proposition, should marriage be distinctly defined between a man and a woman? If we agree with that, then we assent to that proposition. We agree with it and we believe it to be true. If we don't, then we dissent or we disagree. But this is the basic concept of faith or belief. Taking in ideas, weighing them in the mind, and either agreeing or disagreeing, either assenting or dissenting. How about a fact? A fact is anything that is done or that comes to pass, an act, a deed, an event, which is fixed and unalterable in reality. How about religion? Religion can sometimes be a difficult term to define. Religion and worldview are synonymous. When we talk about a religion or a worldview, it's a belief system. And when we talk about beliefs, we just define what a belief is. Belief or faith is assenting to a proposition. So a belief system is then comprised of many propositions that we have either accepted or rejected. And from that, we then derive our values and our moral standards. It's the collective propositions that we have agreed to or disagreed with that make up our worldview, our religion. And so as we think about faith and belief, when we think about religion and worldview, we can see that everybody has a religion or a worldview, and everyone exercises faith, because everyone has to weigh ideas in their mind and either agree with them or disagree with them. And everyone is going to go around thinking of all the different ideas that are proposed and they will collectively come up with a belief system, a religion or a worldview. And so the atheist, just as much as the Christian, has a worldview or a religion. And the scientist has faith just as much as the Christian has faith. The question really becomes which religion is more reasonable to believe? Which one takes more faith? The worldview of an atheist or a non-believing scientist or the Christian? Now how about reason? Let's define that term. Reason is the power of comprehending, inferring, or thinking especially in an orderly, rational way. It's the proper exercise of the mind. Now think about this. When they say that Christians have religion, but the scientist has reason, think about what's being said. We can infer from that statement then that religion is unreasonable, and particularly the Christian religion. That should be offensive to us. Do we not employ reasoning when we are Christians? That makes no sense. Do we not properly exercise our mind, but the scientist does? Let's think about that. Secular scientists, non-believing scientists, tell us that life evolved from non-life. All of life came from non-living material. This is their starting point. It's their foundational premise. Christianity, however, teaches that life was created from life. God, being living, created all living things. This is our starting point. And so once again, we can see that these are two different ideas. They're contradictory propositions. They can't both be true. This is kind of the idea behind the uh, bumper sticker wars between Christians and evolutionists. Christians have their Christian fish symbol that they slap on the bumper of their car. Well, the Darwinian evolutionists decide to mock this by coming up with their own counter argument, if you will their counter bumper sticker where Darwin is swallowing up our truth fish. 
Well, the Christian not to be outdone then comes up with a bigger truth fish that then swallows the smaller Darwinian fish, and so on and so forth. It's kind of tit for tat. Let's look at these two different propositions. Which proposition is consistent with reality, is more reasonable, provides a sufficient ground of explanation or of logical defense? Has a scientist ever observed life being produced from non-life? Has anyone ever seen that? No, of course not. We always see that life produces life. No one has ever once made the observation of non-life, non-living material somehow spontaneously generating into life. And so how much evidence is there for that proposition? Zero. There's zero evidence for this foundational premise of the scientist, the non-believing scientist. Is it a fact that non-life produces life? Or is it a fact that life always begets life? Which one's more reasonable? Which one has more evidence? Well, of course, 100% of the evidence is that life always begets life. No one has ever observed otherwise. Which proposition is more reasonable? Is it reasonable to assent to a proposition, to agree with an idea that denies all of reality? Is this the proper exercise of the mind? Is this reasonable? Think about it. Are we to agree with the idea that non-life produces life, even though every time we look at reality, it's consistently denying that fact, that quote-unquote fact? Which religion, worldview, or belief system is more reasonable? The one whose foundational premise is entirely inconsistent with reality, or the one whose foundational premise is always affirmed by reality? You tell me which religion requires more faith. Christians do not assent, they don't agree with the idea or the proposition that life comes from non-life, because we simply don't have that kind of blind faith. It's in fact the scientist, the unbelieving scientist, who has the blind faith, who is denying all of reality by saying that non-life produces life. And so when I get into discussions with scientists who believe those things, I tell them, I don't have your faith. Your faith is too great for me because you're denying what is consistently proved to be false every single day because life always produces life. To conclude, hopefully now we see the importance of defining our terms and thinking things through. And hopefully your faith has been bolstered as you're better able to distinguish now between what is fact and what is fiction with regard to science. We don't need to be intimidated by the false claims of those who worship at the altar of science. While science is useful, it is limited, and it cannot offer any certain truth. In the next lesson, we will break down the limitations of science even further so that there will not be a shadow of a doubt that the Word of God alone reveals absolute truth to man. See you then.